All right, so let's look at some more uh, additional exercises on uh, dealing with inventory. Uh, everything we've done thus far has dealt with either a retailer or wholesaler of some type. Uh, we're going to uh, dip our toes into the manufacturing environment. And when, when you move on to uh, managerial accounting um, or accounting too, depending on what uh, school you're at, you'll get a bigger dose of this. So, uh, but we need to, uh, we need to understand that not all businesses are service related businesses or merchandising companies. Manufacturing companies have ending inventory values and cost of goods sold uh, as well. So we have a company here uh, that has just begun operations. So this will be uh, from a first year perspective. And so uh, it says here that they have purchased uh, materials costing $84,000 and that they have used $63,000 of those materials in the production of whatever it is they're making now. Uh, materials usually re uh, require a, a reconciliation to come up with material usage, but they have provided us with that figure here, so we can just uh, we can just take that. Uh, it says here that the company's manufacturing uh, operations also had uh, labor costs of fifty-eight thousand dollars and uh, overhead costs of twenty-eight thousand dollars. All right, so um, should probably mention that when we're dealing with a manufacturing company, there are uh, multiple components that go into our product cost because we're not just buying it from someone else. We're manufacturing it from the ground up. So our three components of product costs are going to be our materials, our direct labor costs and our overhead costs associated ma with making that product. Okay, so they've got some further information here at the end of the year. The company had $19,000 of partially completed work in process inventory. Uh, and then they had $35,000 in finished goods inventory. So when you start to look at manufacturing companies a little bit closer, you'll find out that they have not one, but three different types of inventory. They have their regular raw materials. They have, uh, as one type of inventory, they have uh, something called work in process, which are basically partially completed uh, units. And then we have finished goods inventory. And finished goods inventory is uh, just your, your garden variety inventory, all right? So they want to know what was cost of goods sold uh, in 2020. So looks like we've got some uh, a little box here that can help us with this. So they've broken this down into work in process inventory and into finished goods inventory. And so they ask us for several things and a lot of this information is provided to us. So materials used, they gave us this in the question is 63,000. So we might as well go ahead and put it down. We didn't have any beginning inventory, so we don't have to worry with that. Labor costs they provided to us as 58,000 direct labor costs. And we have overhead of 28,000. So cost of goods produced. If we were to add these figures together here, the 63,000 plus the 58,000, plus the $28,000 in overhead, we would come up with $149,000. However, our next box asks us for cost of goods produced, and our scenario tells us that of this $149,000 that we have on our calculator here, that $19,000 
is uh, not complete. And that's going to be our ending inventory of partially complete items. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that in here. But to get cost of goods produced, we're going to subtract that 19000 from the $149,000 of total cost. And so we come up with $130,000 is going to be our cost of goods produced. We're then going to just drop that figure down here. Cost of goods produced is $130,000. All right, and then they want to know cost of goods sold. Well, let's see what we got here. We have at most $130,000 of goods that are ready to sell. But if we come back up here to our scenario, we find that we have $35,000 in our finished goods inventory. So they've given us our ending inventory value. So all we have to do now to come up with cost of goods sold is merely subtract out this $35,000 in finished goods inventory because if we, if we have that $35,000 in finished goods inventory, we obviously did not sell it. So the difference between uh, cost of goods produced and ending inventory, $95,000, and that rep represents our cost of goods sold amount. I will, I will level with you this, these calculations uh, when you move on to the next course are a little bit more difficult, a little bit more time consuming, uh, but for what we need to do, uh, this will suffice for now.